So Jesus told them this story. If a man had a hundred sheep, and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the ninety-nine others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulder. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over ninety-nine others who are righteous and have him straight away. So this year, we talked last week about how the whole year we want to outfit you to center every aspect of your life around Jesus. And we decided that the, the way that uh, would be best to kick, kick that off would be to look at how God's kingdom also centers on Jesus. So that's where we're going to start. God's kingdom, the center of it, is who? Jesus. Now, Jesus, when he was on earth, he, he told these stories that are called parables. And you guys have heard many of them before. Um, but the parable is something that has an earthly story to it. But it, it explains something that's heavenly or, or a kingdom related. So it's very allegorical. It, they, he tells stories and they explain how God's kingdom operates. And at the center of all of those stories is Jesus. Now, when I usually preach, uh, my thought process is to write down a bunch of questions that I want answered, and I always, I always try to find something that's like a different spin on things that uh, I could teach you uh, so that there's an aha moment. But this week, uh, I just want to let you know that I'm prepping this sermon, and the Holy Spirit keeps prompting me uh, with the keep it simple, stupid method. You guys ever heard of that one before? <laughs> Uh, because in this story, the, the parable of the lost sheep, uh, Jesus explains a very important truth that we're going to learn about his kingdom. And the Holy Spirit kept telling me that there is somebody here that will hear this message or someone watching online that very much on the first Sunday of 2024 feels lost. And, and, and sometimes we just need to hear the gospel. We need to hear how God's kingdom operates, and God's kingdom operates in a way that lost people become found. And so today, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it simple, and we're, going to just, we're just going to unpack this parable really fast and, and learn a very important truth about God's kingdom together. I love the way that Luke 15 starts um, before he actually tells this story. We didn't include it in the video because I didn't want to spoil it here. But the, the best part about this, for me at least, is the setting in which Jesus is telling this. I'm going to read it to you. Luke 15. It says, Now the tax collectors and the sinners, they were all gathering around Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners, and he eats with them. Guys, there shouldn't be hardly any better news than that statement for us to hear. The son of the living God, God incarnate, Jesus, welcomes who? Sinners. And he eats with them. Spoiler alert, last time I checked, that was all of us. <laughs> that should be good news for all of us. That The centerpiece of God's kingdom, Jesus, when he was here on earth, the religious folks were mad that he ate with and welcomed people like me and you. That's good news. So these Pharisees, these religious leaders that were pretty frustrated, they, they said, look at this guy. He's eating with sinners. He's, 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 he's dining with and welcoming these sinners. And they didn't mean it as good news. They meant it as very much an insult. And so Jesus, he, he, he turns to the whole crowd, both Pharisees and uh, sinners, and he starts telling this story, okay? It says, suppose that, that you're a shepherd. That's how he starts the story. It's like rule number one as a communicator, don't immediately offend your audience. That's what Jesus did here. So think about it. Uh, these Pharisees, they would have been very high-class 
uh, people, very rich, uh, very much they thought of themselves higher than everyone else. And so what Jesus basically said was uh, he walking into a room full of billionaires and saying, now imagine if your job was to be a fast food worker. And immediately they would have been offended because these guys, just like a billionaire, if they heard the fast food thing, they would have thought, no, I'm way above that. So not only does Jesus offend them right away and say, imagine you're a shepherd, he takes it a step further because he says, imagine that you are a shepherd and you have some sheep and as the shepherd, you lose one of the sheep. That's really important. Has anybody ever thought about that specific language? Imagine that the shepherd lost the sheep. What does that not say here? It doesn't say imagine a sheep gets lost. It says imagine that there's a shepherd and they're in the field and they have all these sheep and the shepherd does what? Loses the sheep. Here's a really important thing we can learn about God's kingdom just from that part alone, that what we've heard so far. It's that God feels it's his responsibility to rescue the lost. Now he immediately puts the onus on who? The shepherd. And I, I had never caught that until this week. God feels responsible for finding the lost. And that should be good news. He welcomes sinners, he eats with them, and he feels a certain responsibility to go out actively seeking them. That's God's kingdom, right? Let me ask you this. Who could possibly, in their right mind, value the lost as much as the found? God. See, in this story, in this, this shepherd's viewpoint, he's got all of these sheep, and he views them as all his own. That's how God views us. We are all his, his children, and somehow, in his mind, his love is so grand and immaculate and big and way grander than we can possibly imagine that he views both lost people and found people the same way. And he's actively seeking out the ones who don't know him yet. Let that sink in for a minute, guys. In the center of God's grand story, in his kingdom, the way that Jesus explains that the kingdom works is that there's one guy, this shepherd, this good shepherd who actively seeks out lost people. And that should be good news for us. Because I don't know about you, but there have been many times in my life where I have felt pretty lost. I felt pretty separated from God. And the good news of today's message is that even in your lostness, God is actively trying to make you found. See, we view people totally different than God does. We've talked about it a couple of weeks ago, how we kind of put people in boxes. We've got like, we've got our good people over here, and we've got our bad people over here. We've got, we got church people over here. Like, they, they don't look like me. So we got church people over here, and then we got like heathens over here, right? And like, there's no way that those people over there can get over here. But that's not how God views people. He views people as his beloved, his creation worth dying for. So he sent his very own son to die for all of those people so that as many lost people become found people as possible. And what's interesting is that he doesn't force that upon us. He doesn't force us to come uh, from being lost to found. He gave us this beautiful gift of, of free will, so we get to make a choice, but he's a shepherd who is actively pursuing the lost, knowing that some of them still will never be found, and yet he makes the decision to pursue them anyways. Does that not sound like a king worth following? Does that not sound like a, a shepherd worth following? Uh, I was scrolling through social media this week. Wouldn't recommend it. Not great. And uh, I was looking at reels on Facebook, which are like short little videos. And I, I don't know if they read my mind or if this is just how technology works, but a reel popped up with um, someone who was raising sheep, which was kind of terrifying because I hadn't really like typed in sheep videos. They just knew I was studying this. Pretty creepy. <laughs> so this sheep video comes up and it's this guy who is a shepherd and he likes to play soccer. And so he's out on the soccer field and he's got this little baby sheep with him. And he lets uh, the audience know in this video that if you raise a sheep from birth, they actively want a shepherd. 
they're, they're, they're a pretty dumb animal and they need to follow somebody. And so he was out on the soccer field and he was doing all these soccer moves and this little sheep was adorably trying to imitate his soccer moves. He was like, if I go right, the sheep goes right. If I go left, the sheep goes left. But the sheep's eyes are built in a certain way that they don't have peripheral vision. They can only look at what's ahead of them. So when a, when a, when a sheep is lost, they don't have any way to come back. They need someone to go and find them. And that's the shepherd's job. In this scenario, Jesus is saying, here's how God's kingdom works. There are tons of sheep. And I myself am going to find the ones that are lost that can't get back to me on their own. I'm going to go find them. And you know what happens after that? When one of them gets found, there's more rejoicing in heaven than you can even imagine because there's a lost person now that is a found person. And that's the type of kingdom that I represent. Who could possibly value the lost in the same way that they value the found? God can. And this morning, as I'm keeping it as simple as possible, I want to let you know the story isn't just about sheep. <laughs> because that's how God views people. He, he views people as his children, and he, he views them as a type of being that will go to any lengths to assure that they become found. This morning, I, I don't know what your 2024 projections are going to be like, but I'm willing to bet that there's at least some people in here that feel pretty lost right now. I don't, I don't know the exact details of your lostness, but I would be willing to bet that there are people in here that are in a season of their life where they feel super separated from God. It might be the lifestyle that you're living. It might be the things that you're into. It might be uh, the, the situation that you woke up this morning and you found yourself in and you have no idea how you're going to get out. Guys, the same kingdom that Jesus was teaching about, the same king is still pursuing you and wants you to be found this morning. That same God sent his very own son and he got up on a cross and died for the sins of lost people so that those lost people could be found and worship him for all of eternity. And so if you're lost this morning, I know someone that can help you be found. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus the Christ and his word tells us that one day in his kingdom, every single knee will bow and confess that he is the Lord. He is the way, the only way, the truth, and he gives you life. So lost people this morning, the way to be found is through that same Jesus. Now, many of you watch this video and in your maybe relating to the mom in this situation. Like, you you can imagine what it's like to lose your child. Can anybody go there mentally? Because it's not like a pleasant place to go to. That's, That's how God feels about his people. He will do anything and go to any length, including humbling himself to death, even death on a cross, so that his people can become found. So this morning, if you're lost, we're going to give you an opportunity to take a step towards being found and and answer the call of the shepherd, Jesus. We're actually, we're going to sing a song, uh, and it's called Reckless Love. We've sang this song a bunch of times. It says, uh, you leave the 99 for the one. It's one of my all-time favorite worship songs. And during this song, we're going to have some baptisms from people that responded at first service and responded throughout the week. Guys, if today you came in here lost, don't leave without being found. We're going to give you an opportunity to come up front and, and say, I'm part of that 99, but I got lost and now I'm the one. And I want to be back part of the group. I want to be part of God's kingdom. We're going to have some pastors down front that if that's you today, we would love to talk to you about what it looks like to go from lost to found. But I love this song because... Every single one of us, if we're Christ followers in this room, can put ourselves back into the mindset of when we were that one that was lost. All of us, that's our story. We have before Jesus, after Jesus, and all of us can go back to that time where we were the lost one. 
And what's so powerful about worshiping with this song is that we get to proclaim victory, that we are no longer that one that was seeking and lost, but we are found and part of God's kingdom. And that, my friends, is good news that's worth worshiping. So during this song, I hope, I hope people flood the front that want to make decisions from being lost to found, but for the rest of us that are already found, let's blow the roof off of this place with praise to the Savior of the, the world who's in charge of his kingdom, who's invited us to be part of it, who's worth worshiping. I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to invite you guys to stand. Lord, I, uh, I ask in this moment that you would, you would just show up. Father, we've, uh, we've, we've prayed this for a long time that we want you here, but, but God, we mean it. We've seen a bunch of life change over the, the, the years of, of you continuing to be faithful on your promises, to, sh- to, to being continually present in our midst. And, and God, we don't want that to stop. You are mighty to save, not us. So we put this moment into your hands right now. I ask that if there's any person in this room that is lost today that doesn't know you, God, I pray that something would be uh, triggering in their minds to take a step towards your son, Jesus, because we know he's the only way for salvation. Father, do what only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys stand and sing.
There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Sing it again from our heart. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow. not a bad way to start a year, guys. <laughs> Man, uh, so uh, one, of the, one of the people that got baptized, his name is James, and uh, he actually, there he is right there. 
Uh, I've talked to James probably almost every day for the last year and a half um, because he met us um, in, in church anywhere while he was in prison uh, over COVID. And uh, he, he told me that some nights he would just watch videos of worship over and over again, and it really helped him get through his sentence. And today he got up at like five in the morning to drive three hours to be here. Um, yeah. And he, he's been wanting, he wanted to be baptized with what he believed was his church family. And so that was just such a special moment. So had to get that out of the way. That was awesome. Um, man, what an awesome kingdom to be a part of where the king is concerned just as much about lost people as he is found. That's, uh, that's the polar opposite of the kingdoms of this earth. See, God's kingdom, something we can't even comprehend because God's kingdom is a kingdom of love, of a, of a savior who gave everything for lost people. And that is a kingdom that I'm excited to be a part of.